So this is the last slide in this workshop where I talk to the kids. All of the following slides after this uh, are speaking to the parents. So in this slide, we discuss what to do if you see someone else being bullied. So there's this whole bystander effect that we are impacted by today, where basically someone is witnessing, many people actually are witnessing someone suffering in some way, and no one is offering help. Everyone is just minding their own business, or they don't want to get involved, or they think someone else will do it. Um, but whatever the case, but no one is really helping. So this is a huge problem nowadays. Um, so we need to take care of this. So the first, so I'm going to talk to you in three points. Um, point number one, if you see someone else being bullied at school, you need to talk to a parent, teacher, or some adult that you trust uh, because they cannot help if they don't know what's going on. So you need to make sure that you report the incident immediately. Uh, so you need to go to this, uh, you go to a trusted adult and say, I saw so-and-so uh, bullying so-and-so at so and such and such location, and I think you should take care of it, and I'm very concerned about that person, whoever he or she may be. Uh, but the point is you need to get help for that person. Don't just sit there and watch. Don't think someone else will do it. Get help for that person. And by trust, we mean, as we discussed in the earlier slide, uh, what we mean is uh, someone whom you know will take care of the situation, uh, will resolve the matter. Um, it's usually someone you can connect with. Second point you need to understand is you must be kind to the kid being bullied. This is very important because in the previous slide, we discussed that one of the main features of a victim of bullying is that they have low self-esteem and they have low self-confidence. So when you go and become kind to the kid who is being bullied, you are rebuilding them up. So the, so, at when, so after an incident of bullying, the bully broke down their self-esteem more and their self-confidence more. Now you need to go there and remind them that no, not everyone is like that. There are nice people in this school. There are people who care about them. There are people who will uh, defend them and take care of them. So you are rebuilding their self-confidence and self-esteem. So the bully was breaking them down, and you are rebuilding them up. Um, so I have some examples included, included here. Sit with them at lunch or on the bus. Talk to them. Invite them to do something. Make them not feel alone. So this is all very important. Um, another thing we need to realize about this particular point is that if you know that the bully will not pick on you or he is just basically he or she just is has a habit of picking on this one particular person, then you should intervene and tell the bully, hey, can you please leave him alone? Don't do that to him. Or just go to the victim immediately and say, hey, are you okay? Hey, do, hey ignore him or ignore her. Hey, come on, let's go over here. Just take him to a safe space, basically, away from the bully. Just get involved, intervene, and take them to a safe location. Uh, use some sort of an excuse. Hey, there's a so-and-so teacher is calling you. Hey, there's this kid looking for you. Whatever the case is, but you need to remove them from that situation and take them to a safe location. Uh, and again, only do this if you do know that the bully will not come after you. Uh, or you can do it in a safe way without getting yourself in trouble with the bully. But otherwise, if you cannot, if that's not an option, then you need to go find help. The last point is that um, you, that kids, that uh, research has shown that when kids themselves at a school get involved in anti-bullying campaigns, it is far more effective than when adults teach them or lecture them to not bully. Why is that the case? Because there is peer pressure. Because now there is support for the victim, right? Now there is uh, uh, there's social pressure and peer pressure on the bully to not bully the kids. So when kids themselves create an environment in their school that, hey, we will not accept bullying in our school, we will not, uh, that this is not a cool behavior, this is not an acceptable form of behavior and environment, and whenever we see something, see someone being bullied, we will always take the victim's side, then that will create fear in the heart of a bully, and they will less likely to bully other kids. Uh, so again, uh, I want to note this again because this is very important. Uh, when kids at schools themselves get involved in anti-bullying campaigns, the incidence of bullying are very highly reduced uh, because there's an environment now created at the school. So I have some examples here you can do. Be on the school safety committee. Implement some sort of anti-bullying workshop or campaign at your school. Talk to your principal or your teacher that you want to run some sort of a campaign. I'm sure they will be happy to help you. Uh, you know, make signs, uh, make information available, what to do if someone is being bullied, what to do if you see someone being bullied. Here's the office number, here's the teacher that you can contact. It will be fully investigated, but just run a whole campaign at your school. 
And another example I have here is teach students how to get help. I think I mentioned that earlier. So at the end of the day, we must understand, all the ki all, uh, uh, kids must understand that if they see someone being bullied, they should not just stand by and not do anything. Either intervene if they can without causing themselves harm or the victim. Um, or uh, get a parent or a teacher or some trusted adult involved who can take care of the situation.